there are several other reports of pilots who saw flat disc-shaped UFOs chasing them, even though they were not shot at. These pilots also reported how their planes were being followed by balls of light. Yet, even though these UFOs, which the pilots call Foo Fighters, didn't attack them, it somehow was able to disable the pilots' plane bombing capabilities. According to the United States, all of this didn't happen. Only one plane crashed, killing three pilots. If this were true, was that why the expedition was canceled? And let's say it wasn't true. Who was behind those UFOs? Could it have been the German? Or were those extraterrestrial? There seem to be more to Antarctica, any way you look at it. Speaking of extraterrestrials, the more Antarctica is examined, the more the mysteries that crop up. An example is the huge electromagnetic anomaly that was detected by NASA satellites in 2006. This anomaly wasn't lying on the surface either. It was buried deep underneath 151 miles of ice. What a beautiful way to confuse researchers. Over a decade later, they are still left with questions. But then, turning to an ancient scroll dated millennia ago, the Book of Enoch, some interesting passages seem to have something to say about this. Enoch was the man who was reported to have escaped death. He was the great-great-grandfather of Noah. He wrote about how he was taken to the place where the corrupted angels who disobeyed God and came to earth were imprisoned. In his book, he had talked about the 200 fallen angels who had lived among men, teaching men advanced technologies for their time, and sleeping with the women and fathering the Nephilim, thereby genetically modifying men and leading mankind astray. The book talked about where they were imprisoned until the appointed day. This place was supposed to be lit by the sun both during the day and at night. In his words, the sky was burning day and night. As it turns out, this fits perfectly with the southern hemisphere during the summer season in Antarctica. At this time, there is daylight for 24 hours. This phenomenon, known as Aurora Australis or Southern Lights, can be visible from high southern latitudes in Antarctica, Australia, New Zealand, Chile, and Argentina. Let's say that was a coincidence. Enoch went further in his book by mentioning seven mountains of precious stones, three towards the east and three towards the south. This is where it gets more interesting. Mount Vinson fits the description of the central mountain. After all, it is the highest mountain in Antarctica. As for the other six, they were there, just not aligning as specified. This could signify that there had been a shift in the Earth's axis of rotation. This is not uncommon. These shifts are known to cause such calamities as floods and tectonic events. Then, it gets even more interesting. If we consider the research conducted by Sir Charles Hapgood, in which he proposes that the last pole shift could have happened about 11,000 years ago, just at the end of the last ice age, we can begin to question if this has any relevance to the biblical flood. This would perfectly explain why these angels would be moved at this time and imprisoned. It would place their whereabouts firmly somewhere in Antarctica. Could they be imprisoned at the summit of the gigantic Mount Vinson? Or could they be hidden right under the 151 miles of ice mentioned earlier? Well, these are exciting thoughts. There is really no solid proof of this. But we can continue to dig more. A journey of 151 miles has to start with a question.